What's up guys, Josh here from Blender Bros. And in this video, I wanna show you how normals work in Blender. Now, normals are very important because basically what they allow you to do is understand how shading works and also you'll understand exactly how to fix any shading problems that you run into. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is we need to go into Blender. We'll just use a cube here. And I'm just gonna show you the basics, all right? I'm gonna go up here to this little menu and I'm gonna turn on this normals button right here, okay? Now when I turn this on, you're gonna see we get these little lines and these lines right here are perpendicular to the face. Now that's because I have face normals turned on, all right? So a face normal is anything perpendicular to a face and you can see all of these normals are perpendicular to all of these faces here, all right? So let me, for example, let me go in here and just add in like a sub D, all right? And the reason the sub D works well here is because the normals are outward. This object is in the correct orientation. Now, if I were to flip these normals, for example, Alt N and then flip, this is gonna make the, these two faces inside out basically. And that's gonna affect the sub D because it's gonna subdivide like inwards, like it, it's strange basically. So an easy way to see this is you can go up here to this setting, you can turn on face orientation, and when you turn on face orientation, it's gonna show you the areas in red that are incorrectly oriented. And to fix that, you simply select everything and you press Shift N, that'll fix it. Now, a lot of people will tell you, you know, to fix this problem, you wanna flip the normals. This is not correct because if I flip the normals here with Alt N, it just inverts the selection. It's not what we wanna do. Instead, what we wanna do is press Shift N, that's gonna recalculate everything perfectly. Now, normals for the faces aren't really that important because normals on faces, essentially, they don't contribute to shading at all. Instead, I wanna focus a lot more on something called vertex normals. Now, I'm gonna go here to this menu right here. And basically, what this is gonna give us is it's gonna give us an average of the direction of um, these vertices here. So basically you can see I have an edge here, an edge here, and also an edge right here. And these three edges go into this single vertex. So the perpendicular direction is the average of these three directions. So if I go into side view, you're gonna see it's 45 degrees basically. And um, that's a vertex normal, okay? Now a common issue you guys are gonna see is if I were to go into here and maybe add in like a Boolean, Maybe you're doing a Boolean workflow. You go in and then you add in a bevel. A lot of you guys are gonna notice this problem here where we have this very strange shading. You're gonna see this all the time. You've probably seen it before in your own projects. And the reason for this is all due to your vertex normals. Now, most of you know this by now. To fix this, you literally go to, to the uh, normal section. You go to weighted normal. That's gonna fix the problem and you know you can get on with your day. But I wanna actually show you what weighted normals do because a lot of you guys don't actually know. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna apply this Boolean and normally I wouldn't recommend applying a holding bevel like this uh, for obvious reasons, but I'm gonna go ahead and just apply that because I wanna access the geometry here. So I'm gonna apply that, okay? And once I apply that bevel, you're gonna see we have all the vertex normals from these vertices here. Now pay particular attention to the outside area of the bevel here. If I go into side view, you're gonna see these normals right here, they're slightly bent, maybe you know 10 degrees, 20 degrees, I don't know, not 20 degrees, maybe like 10, doesn't really matter. The issue here is these normals are slightly bent and what this does is it slightly bends the shading here as well. That's why we get these weird shading issues and it's a problem. So whenever I add a weighted normal modifier, if I go here to normals and then weighted normal, it fixes the problem. But on a much more technical level, what it does is it straightens out these vertices right here. The normals on these vertices get completely straightened out. They're 90 degrees. So now, since these normals aren't bent, the shading isn't bent. So again, if I were to undo that, right, it's slightly bent. Whenever I add in that weighted normal modifier, and then apply it, it is no longer bent. And this is, you know, a very common problem because a lot of people don't understand, you know, why their shading's all messed up when they're using, you know, Booleans and stuff like that. 
Simple answer is your shading gets bent because the vertex normals are not perpendicular. They're not 90 degrees. So the weighted normal is gonna fix that for you. So, you know, I could get very technical with this. I could explain like everything about normals and, you know, get into like a, a huge lesson, but it's not necessary. This is how normals work. That is how the weighted normal modifier works. And whenever you run into weird shading issues like this, the simple answer is you add in a weighted normal modifier and you're gonna be fine. So next time, you know, somebody tells you add a weighted normal modifier and they just kind of like say that as a blanket statement, consider like, you know, what this actually does. Consider if that is actually the solution to your problems because oftentimes it could be something completely different. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. This should be a very simple, you know, understanding. And again, if you guys wanna learn our entire hard surface modeling workflow within the next two weeks, check out our hard surface accelerator program in the link below. We're gonna teach you everything from modeling to design to rendering to presentation to building a portfolio, just like thousands of our students have done here already. So I'll link that program in the description below without um, you know, getting too technical into this video. I hope it was useful and I'll see you in the next one.